Lab Guy here. Good news tonight. Cartravision camera, serial number 7, has finally been repaired. I only worked on it a few hours every other night or so over the past several weeks as time permitted. I was not at my sharpest after work, um, lacking enthusiasm to do more soldering, but be that as it may, here's the sequence of events that we went through. The first time we tested serial number 7 we had no image. It was detecting a signal and had all the symptoms of vertical scan failure. So the first stage was to replace all of the electrolytic capacitors in that camera which I did. I then reassembled the camera and began testing and at that point <clears throat> there was no image at all. So I started to systematically test all of the power supplies in sequence, the 11.2 volts, the 300 volts, the 200 volts, <clears throat> the minus 77 volts, the current going to the focus coil, all of the voltages at the base of the Viticon tube. I injected a signal at the target input of the video amplifier, had visible noise on the screen, no picture. So I then purchased two replacement Viticon tubes and I tried both of them in the camera, same result. So yesterday evening I was sitting here thinking about the problem and the only possible explanation was that the connection from the target connection on the Viticon tube, which is this ring at the front going over to the video amplifier, it's a wire about that long. The only explanation was that that wire was broken. Sure enough, the wire plugs into the video circuit board with a small folded metal female pin that slips onto a post that's soldered into the board and it was covered with heat shrink tubing. The wire had broken off of the metal pin inside of the heat shrink tubing and the heat shrink tubing was hanging onto the jacket of the wire so good that on three other occasions when I gave it the tug test it didn't pull out so it gave all indications of not being broken. Last night I decided to give it the Ani treatment and I gave it a really good tug and sure enough the pin pulled right off the wire. Two minutes later this camera was making pictures. So you're seeing the video now relatively for the first time since I repaired the camera last evening. So that is the good news about this camera. All seven of my cartridge television cameras work. They all will get their capacitors replaced inevitably and so on. But let's back up for a moment. Concerning the vertical scan failure, I did say I replaced all of the electrolytic capacitors, didn't I? Do any of you know what these are? These are called tantalum capacitors and these are the two capacitors that are in the ramp generator for the vertical deflection circuit. One of them is as wide open as the barn door and that's why there was no vertical scan. I found that in the first week of troubleshooting but at this point, the vertical scan wasn't even the issue. It was the lack of a picture signal. So, in the long term, we hunted down through all of the power supplies, the current supply to the focus coil, all of the connections on the back of the Viticon, and so on and so forth, and eventually figured it out. Now, this is just the way that television repair goes. Everybody has the story of taking their TV to the television repairman or their car to the car shop, 
multiple times only for the final $2,000 repair to be solved with a 10 cent part. In this case, it wasn't even 10 cents, it was free. All I had to do was solder the wire back to the connector and plug it in. So that's the story of serial number seven. And I am so happy that this task is finished. Why don't we take a look at that camera now? So here is camera number seven in its entirety. You have the two main circuit boards, one on each side. They're removable as I showed in the earlier videos. This harness goes to the back of the Viticon tube in here and supplies all the voltages to the electron gun of the tube. The silver body is the deflection and focus coil and over here we have the lens and optics. Not visible is that wire that I was talking about. It is up inside here. It goes to a small brass contact on the front of the deflection yoke where the face of the tube sits behind the lens. And it connects to right there on the circuit board on that little island. There's a pin on the opposite side that that plugs onto. That wire was broken this whole time and all solved problems are trivial. That's my conclusion. We now know what the cause of the problem was. It's hysterically funny in hindsight, but I will tell you that I have been ripping my hair out trying to figure out why I could not get a picture from this camera. I did open one of the other cameras at one point and did A-B comparisons with the oscilloscope and with the meter, checking every single voltage and needless to say they were all within four or five percent of each other. They, this camera was fully functional with one broken wire. So this is one of the banes of the electronics hobby or worse yet the repair business and uh, this is where a repair guy can lose all of his profit just like that. So I'd like to welcome all of the new subscribers. We now at this instant have 3,216 subscribers on my channel. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you everyone who has subscribed and I appreciate your patronage. Thank you for watching my channel. Be sure to tell a friend about the channel, spread the word. Um, greetings as usual to all of the old time subscribers, especially whoever that first guy is who's still with me today because I've been on YouTube for over 10 years now longer, I think 11 or 12 years, something in that range. And all of you are precious. It makes it worth my while to make these videos. I will be doing in follow-up videos a little more uh, deep diving into these cameras. I have improvements that I think we can make to make these cameras more generally usable. They have two faults, if you'll recall, and that is that they operate on 18 volts DC. This is, this is a problem. It's not insurmountable. You can get an 18 volt power supply. I bought this one online, no problem. It's an 18 volt power supply for a computer. The other issue with the Cartravision camera is that it wants a 60 cycle pulse from the power line to synchronize that phased locked loop inside. Well, it makes sense. You got to understand that the cartridge television system was based on a gigantic videotape recorder, a cassette recorder that was built into a console color television that sat in the living room. And what if grandpa wanted to record his kids in the backyard? 
Well, the CartraVision camera ships with a 50-foot cable. So you plug it into the back of the console television, where it's generally inaccessible. <laughs> it's the king of engineering oopses. So you plug your camera in and the microphone, which also had a 50-foot cable, and you went outdoors as far as you could on the cable, and you would record. Well, anyone who's done long cable runs for audio or video knows that if you do that, the cable will eventually start picking up 60 cycle hum. In television, they found in the early days that if they synchronized the scanning with that hum, the hum was still in the picture. It could either be an S shaping of the picture or it could modulate the brightness of the picture. But as long as the camera was scanning exactly in time with the hum, that crosstalk of power frequency crosstalk in the picture would sit still and it's tolerable. If the camera is not locked to the power line then it, it does the old Wayne and Garth thing down through the picture making the picture do this or you'll have a dark and a light bar rolling through. Both are unacceptable. So synchronizing the camera to the power line makes that anomaly stand still and for the 1960s, that was still viable, although at the point that this system was designed, VCRs were already small enough to sit on top of a television, and many, if not all, of the other cameras ever made were standalone cameras that ran on 12 volts. <laughs> there you go. So, in the future episode, we'll try and experiment. The oscillator in the camera, the master oscillator, is a 31.5 kilocycle oscillator. So I went and purchased a 31.5 kilocycle crystal. These are rare as hen's teeth. This was the only one I was able to locate. And that's not to say there aren't more of these. These were very common in old television cameras. And we're going to build a crystal oscillator to substitute for the uh, two transistor uh, voltage controlled oscillator that's in the uh, CartraVision camera. And we're going to put a fixed crystal sync clock oscillator in there and see how that, how well that works. Now that immediately eliminates the need for the 60 cycle power line pulse. That only leaves the 18 volt problem. Uh, it's an issue, it's not a problem, because you can buy 18 volt power supplies easily enough. They're not as common as 12 volt, but you can find them. Running from a battery is a little less convenient, but a clever person would pair up a pair of 12 volt batteries and a uh, modern $2 buck converter, which you can get on eBay, to drop that voltage to 18 volts, and you'd be able to run the camera for a couple of hours easy. So we'll see if we can adapt these cameras easy enough, and I will provide those details, and see if we can breathe some life into these old antique cameras yet, and uh, see if we can cause a club to break out out there of people who use CartraVision Viticon cameras for their hobby productions or for their monster movie special effects. So there are many things one can do with the older tech if they're willing to uh, experiment and be artistic about it. So uh, this does not conclude the CartraVision camera thon, but this is a crescendo of sorts that we've reached the point where all seven of my cameras work. Thank you for watching the videos. Thank you for subscribing to my channel. Thank you for being loyal viewers. And stay tuned for more interesting video topics to come. I have I have a whole bunch of them up here. I have a, a little audio project coming up that I think some of you may find 
intriguing. If you ever uh, played with uh, transistor radios in the 60s or 70s, this could make you nostalgic. So I'll leave you with that. And until next time, Lab Guy out.